Good evening. This is the BBC General Forces Programme, welcoming you to an evening of music and laughter, dedicated to our brave men and women overseas and on the home front. Right. Yes. <laughs> In a few moments, we will hear from Bernard Monshin and his Rio Tango Band. Yes. <laughs> but first, a song for everyone missing someone tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the wonderful harmonies of Quintasia! <laughs> Special bulletin. It has just been announced that all hostilities in Europe are to cease immediately following the surrender of the enemy high command. The Prime Minister is expected to broadcast an address later this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, after six long years, we are at peace! <laughs> bestowed much honour on a young Florentine called Claudio. <laughs> he hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. He hath an <coughs> uncle here in Messina, will be very much glad of it. I've already delivered him letters, and I... there appears much joy in him. Mm. I pray you, is Monsieur Montanto returned from the wars, or no? 
I know none of that name, lady. Uh, and my cousin means Sir uh, Benedict of Padua. Oh, well, he's returned, and just as pleasant as ever he was. But I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in his wars? But how many hath he killed? For I promise to eat all of his killing. He hath done good service. And a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier too, lady. But what is he to a lord? Uh, 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 well, to a, a lord, a lord. Uh, to a man, a man. Stuffed with all honourable virtues. For indeed, he is no less than a stuffed man. You must uh, not, sir, mistake my niece. There's a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Who is his companion now? For every month he have a new sworn brother. I see, lady. The gentleman's not in your books. <laughs> no, and if he were, I would burn my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? Oh, he is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he hath caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound ere it be cured. I shall keep friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will not run mad, niece. No, not till a hot January. <laughs> I say, Don Pedro is approached. Men. Good Senor Leonardo, are you come to meet your trouble? The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. Never did trouble come to my house in the likeness of your grace. <laughs> you embrace your charge too willingly. <laughs> I think this is your daughter. Her mother had many times told me so. Were you in <laughs> doubt, sir, that you asked her? <laughs> Senor Benedict! No. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina, as like him as she is. I wonder if you'll still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? If Disdain should die where he has such meat food to feed it, as Signor Benedict, courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if he comes in her presence. It is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, <laughs> only you excepted, and I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly <laughs> I love none. A dear happiness to women, they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood. I am of your humour for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than hear a man swear that he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, <laughs> so some gentleman or other shall scape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse, and twere such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot, teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue. But keep in your way. In God's name I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. In your benefit, in your glory. My dear friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here for at least a month, and he heartily prays that some occasion may delay us longer. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Oh, please it your grace, lead on. Leonardo, we will go together. Daughter of Signor Leonardo. I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? 
Do you ask me as an honest man should for my simple and true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? I pray thee speak in sober judgment. Why, faith, she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only this commendation can I afford her. Were she other than as she is, she were unhandsome, but being no other but as she is, I do not like uh, her. Thou thinkst I am in sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? <laughs> Could the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. I can see yet without spectacles that I see no such matter. There's her cousin, and were she not possessed with a fury, that exceeds her much in beauty as the first of May doth the last December. I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I, I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary. A hero would be my wife. Does it come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonardo's? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. <laughs> You hear, Count Claudio? I can be as secret as a dumb man, but on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance, he is in love. Oh, Ben! <laughs> with who? Now that is your grace's part, with Hero, Leonardo's short daughter. Amen, if you love her. For well, the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I speak mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I know the know how she should be loved, nor feel how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give the most humble thanks. But that I will hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me, I will live a bachelor. I well, shall see you ere I die, look pale with love. With hunger, with sickness, or with anger, my lord, not with love. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat, and shoot at me. Well, as time shall try. In time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck the horns from the bowl and set them in my forehead and let me be vilely painted and in such great letters as they say, here is a horse to hire and let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict, the married man. <laughs> Benedict, repair to Leonardo's. Tell him I shall not fail him at supper, for he hath indeed made great preparation. Examine your conscience. So I leave you. <laughs> Hath Leonardo any son, my lord? No child but Hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord. But when you when you went onward on this ended action, I looked on her with a soldier's eye that liked but had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant, in their rooms come thronging, soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young Hero is. <coughs> Saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou wilt tire the Hero with a book of words. If thou dost love fair Hero, cherish it, and I will break with her, and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Look, I know we shall have revelling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair Hero that I am Claudio, and in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart and take her here in prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to her father will I break, and the conclusion is she shall be thine. <laughs> Yeah. 
now, brother? Brother, I can give you strange news that you yet dream not of. Are they good? The Prince and Claudio, whilst walking in my orchard, were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The Prince discovered to Claudio that he loved my niece, uh, your daughter, and he meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found a accordance, he intends to break it with you instantly. The fellow any wit that told you this. Well, he's a, he's a good, sharp fellow. I'll, I'll send for him. You can question him yourself. No, no, we, we will hold it as a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all that she may be the better prepared for an answer. If, peradventure, this be true, uh, I'll go you and tell her of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lord, why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds, therefore, the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business. Laugh ha, when I am merry and claw no man in his humour. Yea, but you must not make full show of this till you can do so without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace. Where it is impossible you should take true root, but by the fair weather that you make yourself. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but I am a plain dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Oh, what news, Baraccio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an impending marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? Marry, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio? <laughs> Even he! <laughs> How came you to this? I heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself. And, having a pocket, <laughs> Give her to Claudia. <laughs> come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup have all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me. To the death, my lord. Shall we go prove what's to be done? Uh, we'll wait upon your lordship. Was not Count John here at supper? Oh, I saw him not. <laughs> How tardy that gentleman looks. I never can see him but I'm heartburned and now after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. <laughs> he were an excellent man, just in the midway between him and Benedict. The one is too like an image and says nothing, and the other one too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. <laughs> <laughs> then half Signor Benedict's tongue in Count John's mouth and Half Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot, uncle, and money enough in his purse, such a man would win any woman in the world if he could get her good will. By my choice, niece, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. Oh, Lord. I cannot endure a husband with a beard on his what? face. I'd rather lie in the woollen. <laughs> well, you may yet light on a husband that hath no beard. What should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? Exactly. He that have a beard is more than a youth. Absolutely. And he that have no beard is less than a man. True again. For he that is more than a youth 
is not for me, and he that is less than man, I'm not for him. Faith, she's too cursed. <laughs> well then, go you into hell? No, but to the gate. And there the devil will meet me, like an old cockwood with horns on his head. Get you to heaven, Beatrice, get you to heaven. Here's no place for you maids. So away to St. Peter's for the heavens. He shows me where the bachelors sit. And there sit we, as merry as the day is long. Well, I hope, niece, that you will be guided by your father. Yes, Faith. It is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you. But for all else, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow. And make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. <laughs> Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. Mm. Father, as it please me. <laughs> well, niece, I hope one day to see you fitted with a husband. Not till God make all men of some other metal than earth. <laughs> you, you apprehend passing shrewdly. I have a good eye, uncle. I can see a church by daylight. Oh, the revelers are entering, mate. Good room, brother. <laughs> Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing. I am yours for the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me in your company? I may say so, if I please. And when please you to say so? Why, when I like your favour. <laughs> speak low if you speak loud. I know you well enough. You are Signor Antonio. That's a word I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. Well, to tell you the truth, I counterfeit it. <laughs> you could not do him so ill well unless you were the very man. <laughs> you are here, you are here. Here's his dry hand up and down. At a word I'm not. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Oh, well. Can virtue hide itself? Go to, you are he. Graces will appear and there's an end. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I would that you did like me. So would not I for your own sake, for I have many young qualities. Oh, <laughs> which is one. I say my prayers aloud. Oh. Will you not tell me who told you so? Uh, not I, you shall pardon me. Will you not tell me who you are? Uh, not now. But I was disdainful that I had my good wit out of a hundred merry tales. Well, it was Signor Benedict that said so. What's he? Don't you know him well enough? Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why? He's the prince's jester, a very dull fool. His only gift is in devising impossible slanders, none but libertines delight in him, for he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and they beat him. I'm sure he's in the fleet. I would, he boarded me. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do, but he'll break a comparison to on me, which peradventure not marked and not laughed at, strikes him into melancholy. <laughs> we must follow the leaders. In every good thing. <laughs> and that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are not you, Signor Benedict? Uh, <coughs> you know me well. I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. <laughs> he is enamoured on Hero. I pray you, dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. How, <coughs> how know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. And so did I. I he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. Let's answer I in the name of Benedict. 
hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. It is certain so. The prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things save in the office and affairs of love. This is an accident of hourly proof, which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. Uh, Count Claudio! Yea, the same. Come, will you go with me? Whither? About your... <laughs> About your business, for the prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy of her. Do you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave me. Or will not be, I'll leave you. But my lady Beatrice should know me, and yet not know me. <laughs> the prince is full. <laughs> I may go under that title because I am merry, but I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter, disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person, and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Well, Signor, where's the cup? Did you see him? At troth, my lord, I found him here, as melancholy as a rabbit in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady. The Lady Beatrice hath a quarrel with you. The gentleman that danced with her told her that she is much wronged by you. But she, she misused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking I were myself, that I were the prince's jester. That I were duller than a great Thor, paddling jest upon jest which had impossible conveyance upon me, that I stood like a man at a mark, the whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards, and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star, so indeed all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Oh, look, here she is. <laughs> <coughs> will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I will go on the slightest errand now to the antipodes that you can devise to send me on. I will fetch you a hair off the great Sham's beard. Do you any ambassage to the pygmies rather than hold three words conference with this harpy? <gasps> You have no employment for me. None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir. Here is a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Marry. Once before he won it of me with false dice. Therefore your grace may well say, I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So I would not. He should do me, my lord, lest I prove to be the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, who you sent me to seek. Why? How now, Count? Wherefore art thou sad? Not sad, my lord. What then? Sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil Count, seville as an orange, and something of that jealous complexion. <laughs> In faith, lady, I believe your blazon to be true, but I'll be sworn, if he be so, his conceit is false. Here. Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtained. Name the day of marriage, and may God give thee joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count. Tis your cue. <laughs> Silence. Here's the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I do give myself away for you and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss, and let him speak neither. <laughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord, I thank it 
poor fool. It keeps me on the windy side of care. My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. <laughs> so she doth, cousin. Good Lord for alliance. Thus go everyone to the world but I. And I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry, hey ho, for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. <laughs> I'd rather have one of your father's getting. Has your grace uh, a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Will you have me, lady? No, my lord. <laughs> Unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech you and pardon me, for I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, and to be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, my lord. My mother cried. But then there was a star danced, and under that was I born. Cousins! God give you joy! Niece, uh, you looked at those things that I told you of. I cry your mercy, by your grace's pardon. By my troth, a pleasant-spirited lady! Well, there's little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She never, she's never sad, but when she sleeps, I'm not ever sad then. Well, I've heard my daughter say she hath often dreamed of unhappiness and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of her husband. By no means. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. She would make an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, oh Lord, my Lord. If they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. Mm. Count Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Uh, tomorrow, my Lord. Uh, not till Monday, my dear son, which is hence a just seven night, and the time too brief too to have all things answer my mind. Oh, come, you shake the head at so long a breathing. <laughs> but I warrant thee, Claudio, that time shall not go dully by us. I will, in the interim, undertake one of Hercules's labours, which is to bring Senor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, the one with the other. I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to but to fashion it, if you three will but render such assistance that I shall give you direction. My well, lord, I'm for you if it costs me ten nights watching. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero. I will do any modest office to help my cousin to, to a good husband. <laughs> Benedict is not the unhopefulest husband that I know. Thus far can I praise him. He is of a noble strain, of approved valour, and confirmed honesty. I will teach you how to humour your cousin so that she shall fall in love with Benedict. And I, with your two helps, will so practice on Benedict that in despite of his quick wit and his queasy stomach, he will fall in love with Beatrice. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory will be ours before we are the only love gods. Come in with me and I'll tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonato. Yea, my lord. But I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be medicinable to me. I am sick in displeasure to him, and whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Well, not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship more about it. Oh, a year since. How much I am in the favour of Margaret, the uh, lady hero gentlewoman? I remember. Well, I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? Well, the poison of that is in you to temper. Go you to the prince, your brother. Tell him that he hath wronged himself in marrying this renowned Claudio, whose estimation you do mightily hold up. 
to a contaminated state. Such a one as Hera. What proof shall I make of that? Well, proof enough. To misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, <laughs> to kill the Alato. Looking for any other issue? Only to despite them, I will endeavour anything. <laughs> Go then. Find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. <laughs> Intend a kind of zeal to both the Prince and Claudio, as in love of your brother's honour, who has made this match, and his best friend's reputation, who thus be like cousin to the semblance of a maid, <laughs> that you have discovered thus. <laughs> now, they shall scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances that shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window, hear me call Margaret Hero. <laughs> Bring them to see this the very night before the intended marriage. In the meantime, I will fashion the matter that Hero shall appear absent. <laughs> And there shall appear such seeming truth in Hero's disloyalty <laughs> that jealousy shall be called assurance and all the preparation overthrown. <laughs> <laughs> Grow this to what adversity we can. I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working this, and thy fee is a thousand pounds. Oh, well, be you constant in the accusation, and thy cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn their day of marriage. Chamber window lies a book. Bring it hither to me. <laughs> I'm here already, sir. <laughs> I know that, but I would have thee hence and here again. Ah. A book. <laughs> a book. <laughs> I do but wonder that one man seeing how much another is a fool when he dedicates his behaviours to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. There was a time when I heard no music in him but the drum and the fife. Now he would rather hear of the tabor and the pipe. There was a time when he would have walked ten mile afoot to see a good armour. Now he will lie ten nights awake carving the fashion of a new doublet. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose like an honest man and a soldier. And now has he turned orthography. His very words are a fantastical banquet just like so many strange dishes. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I will not be sworn on it, but love may transform me to an oyster. But I'll take my oath. Till he have made an oyster of me, he will never make me such a fool. <laughs> One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another, virtuous, yet I am well. Another, wise, yet I am well, till all graces be in one woman, 
One woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's for certain. Wise or I'll none. Virtuous or I'll never cheapen her. Fair or I'll look not on her. Mild or come not near me. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be blonde. Of what colour it please God. <laughs> oh, the prince and monsieur love. I will hide me. <laughs> Come, shall we hear this music? See you where Benedict hath hid himself? Very well, my lord. Come, Claudio, we'll hear that song again. Oh, good, my lord, tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. It is the witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection. I pray thee, sing. Now, divine heir, now is his soul ravished. Is it not strange that sheep's gut should hail souls out of men's bodies? <laughs> sigh no more, lady, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever, one foot in sea and one on shore. To one thing constant never Then sigh not so But let them go And be you blithe And me converting all Your sounds of woe Into hay Nani, nani Sing no more, ditty sing no more of time so dull and heavy The fraud of man was ever so Since summer first was leafy Then sigh no so, more but, but let them go And be you right And bar me converting all Your sounds of woe into hay by my troth, a good song. And an ill singer, my lord. Oh, no, no. Faith, thou'd sing is well enough. And he had been a dog that would have howled thus, they would have hanged him. <laughs> Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today? That your niece Beatrice is in love with Signor Benedict. What? <laughs> I did not think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so <coughs> dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviours seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? By my troth, I cannot tell what to think of it, my lord but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit? There was never a counterfeit of passion. Came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why, what effect of passion shows she? Bake the hook well. This fish will bite. Uh, what effects, my lord? Uh, what, uh, yeah. uh, you, you heard my daughter tell you how? She did indeed. Well, how? How, I pray you. <laughs> <laughs> you amaze me! <laughs> I should think this a trick, but that Leonardo speaks it. Hath she uh, told Benedict of her affection? No, and swear she never will. That's her torment. She will be up twenty times a night, and there will she sit until she has writ a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Oh, she tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, railed at herself that she should be so immodest as to write to one who she knew would flout her. Uh, I measure him, says she, by my own spirit, for I should flout him if he writ to me, yea, though I love him, I should. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, 
Tears her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. Indeed she does. My daughter says so. <laughs> My daughter is afraid that she will sometimes do a dreadful outrage, outrage. to herself. Uh, it is very true. <laughs> <clears throat> it were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not disclose it. To what end? He would but make a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. She is an excellent sweet lady, and out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but in loving Benedict, I would she had bestowed this dotage upon me. I would have made her half myself. I pray you, tell Benedict of it and hear what he will say. My lord... <laughs> Were it good, thank you. Well, uh, uh, the hero thinks surely she will die, for she says she will die if he love her not. She will die if she make her love known, and she will die if he woo her. If she should make tender of her love, it is very possible he will scorn it. For the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. He is a very proper man, and in my mind very wise. He doth indeed show some sparks that are like wit. And, and I take him to be valiant. As Hector, I assure you, I love Benedict well, and I could wish that he would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy, so good a lady. Will you walk, my lord? Dinner is ready. If he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> Let the same net be spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewomen carry. Let us send Beatrice to call him in to dinner. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of it from Hero. Love me? Why? It must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say too that she would rather die than show any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happy are they that can hear their detractions and put them to mending. They say the lady is fair. Tis the truth. I can bear them witness. And virtuous. Tis so. I cannot reprove it. And wise. But for loving me. It is no addition to her wit. Nor no great argument of her folly. For I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me because I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that it cannot endure his age. Shall quips and sentences into these paper bullets of the brain or a man from the career of his humour? No, the world must be peopled. <laughs> When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. Oi! Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I'm sent to bid you come in to dinner. Fair Beatrice. <laughs> I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains than those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure then in the message? Yea, Signor. Just so much as you may take upon a nice point. <laughs> you have no stomach, Signor. Say you well. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come in to dinner. There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. That as much as to say, any pains I take for you, 
are as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity of her, I am a villain. Um. <laughs> are you good men and true? Yes. No! Cut my life! Get in line! the most is that this man be constable. George Seacole, sir, for he can write and read. Come hither, neighbour Seacole. <laughs> to be a well-favoured man is the gift of fortune, but to write and read comes by nature. <laughs> Both of which... You have. I knew that would be your answer. Well, for your favour, sir, make no boast of it. And for your writing and reading, let that appear when there is no need for such a vanity. You are thought here to be the most senseless and fit men for the prince's watch. This is your charge. You are to comprehend all vagrom men. You are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. How? If he will not stand. Why then, take no note of him, but let him go and presently call the rest of the watch together and thank God you're rid of a knave. If he will not stand when he is bidden, then he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for the watch to babble and to talk is most tolerable and not to be endured. We'd rather sleep than talk, sir. Why, you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. For I cannot see how sleeping should have end. Only, uh, have a care your warrants be not stolen. <coughs> now, you are to call at all the ale houses and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. How if they will not, sir? Why then, let them alone till they are sober. And if they make you not then the better answer, why, you may say they are not the men you took them for. Well, sir... If you meet a thief... You may say, you may suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. And for such kind of men, the less you meddle or make with them, why, the more is for your honesty. But if we know him to be a thief, sir, shall we not lay hands on him? Truly, by your office you may. But I think they that touch pitch will be defiled. The most peaceable way for you, if you do take a thief, it's to let him show himself what he is and steal out of your company. <laughs> <laughs> you have always been thought a merciful man, partner. Truly, I would not hang a dog by my will. Much more a man who have any honesty in him. That is very true, yes. This is the end of your charge. You, constable, are to present the prince's own person. If you meet the prince in the night, you may stay in. Oh, by our lady, that I think he cannot. He may stay in. <laughs> uh, Marry, not without the prince be willing, for indeed the watch ought to offend no man, and it is an offence to stay a man against his will. Oh, by our lady, it be so, yes. Oh. Well, masters, good night. And if it be any matter of weight chances, call up me. Uh, come, neighbour. Well, masters, we hear our charge. We'll sit upon this bench till two, and then all to bed. One word more, honest neighbours. I pray you watch about Signor Leonardo's door. For the wedding being there tomorrow, there is a great coil tonight. Adieu. Uh, be a vigilant, I beseech you. Vigilant. <laughs> Her. I and Ursula walk in the orchard, and our whole discourse is of her. 
bit her steel into the orchard. There she will hide her to listen to our purpose. This is thy office. Fare thee well in it and leave us alone. I'll make her come, I warrant you, presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, my talk to thee must be of Benedict and how he is sick in love with Beatrice. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than man ever did merit. <laughs> now begin for look where Beatrice runs close to the ground to hear our conference. Fear you not my part of the dialogue. Then go we near her, that her ear lose nothing of the full sweet bait we lay for it. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So <laughs> says the prince and my new trained lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them. If they loved Beatrice, to wish him wrestle with affection, and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Oh, God of love! I know he doth deserve as much as maybe yield is to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart with that of proud of stuff and that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn might spark in her eyes, misprising what they look upon, and her wit values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love. <gasps> sure, I think so, and therefore certainly it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why, you speak truth. I never yet saw a man how wise, noble, young, how rarely featured, but she would spell him backward. So turns she every man the wrong way out, and never gives the truth the merit that which simpleness and virtue purchaseth. Sure, such carping is not commendable. No, not to be so odd and from all sorts as Beatrice's cannot be commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would talk me out of myself. Oh, she would mock me, press me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict like like covered fire consume away in size and waste inwardly for a better death than to die with mocks. Yet tell her of it. Hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. Oh, do not do your cousin so much wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have. As to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man of Italy who is accepted, my dear Claudio. I pray you, madam, be not angry with me, speaking my fancy. But Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, for argument and valour, goes foremost in report through Italy. He hath an excellent good name. <laughs> When are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow. <laughs> She's lined, I warrant you. We have caught her, madam. If this proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> for pride and scorn so much. Contempt, farewell, and maiden's pride are due, for no glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart with thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve and I believe it better than reporting me. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a 20 minute intermission. In a few moments, we'll hear more from Quintasia. In the interim, tea and coffee are available at the Blods Hall. I'm delighted to announce that we've even managed 
We are off air, aren't we? Oh, good. We've even managed to acquire a few bags of sugar. <laughs> Welcome back, Quintasia! Then he's 
number came out that he was gone with a trap. He's in the army now, a going rebelly. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. He puts the boys to sleep with boogie every night and wakes them up the same way in the early grind. They clap their hands and stamp their feet because they know how he plays when someone gives him a beat. He really breaks the mold when he plays rebelly. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. A root, a toot, a tooly, a tooly blows into the bar. He boogie rhythm, he can't blow a note unless the bass and guitar is playing with him. And the company jumps when he plays rebelly. He's a boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. Good 
Stand till your marriage be consummate, and then go I toward Arrogan. I'll bring you thither, my lord, if you'll vouchsafe me. Nay, I will only be bold with Benedict for his company, for from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot he is all mirth. His heart is as sound as a bell, and his tongue is the clapper, for what his heart thinks, his tongue speaks. <laughs> Gallants, I am not as I have been. Uh, so say I, uh, methinks you are sadder. I hope he be in love. <laughs> Hang him. There's no true drop of blood in him to be truly touched with love. If he be sad, he wants money. I, yeah, uh, I have the toothache. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sigh for the toothache? Well, everyone can master a grief, but he that has it. Yet say I, he is in love. If he be not in love with some woman, there is no believing old signs. And the greatest note of it is his melancholy. And when was he going to wash his face? Indeed, that tells a heavy tale for him. Conclude. Conclude he is in love. Nay, but I know who loves him. That what I know too. I warrant one that knows him not. Yes, and his ill conditions. And in despite of all, dies for him. <laughs> she should be buried with her face upwards. Yet this is no charm for the toothache. Good old senor. Walk with me a while. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak with you, which these hobby horses must not hear. My life, to break with him about Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts with Beatrice, and then the two bears will not bite one another when they meet. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private? And if it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that, when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not. I let that appear hereafter, and aim better at me by that I will now manifest. For my brother, I think he holds you well, and in dearness of heart, have helped to effect your ensuing marriage. Surely suit ill spent and labour ill bestowed. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened, the lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she. Leonardo's hero. Your hero. Every man's hero. Disloyal! The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Think you of a worse title, and I will fit her to it. Wonder not till further warrant. Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. 
but it would better fit your honour to change your mind. May this be so. I will not think it. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have seen more and heard more, proceed accordingly. I will disparage her no farther till you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Hero! Oh, hero! <laughs> Close then. Some treason, masters. Yet stand close. Thereby, no. I have earned of Don John a thousand pounds. <laughs> it's possible any villainy should be so dear. Oh, thou shouldst ask if it were possible that any villainy should be so rich. For when rich villains have need of poor ones, then poor ones shall make what price they will. Oh. <laughs> oh, here, somebody. No, just the vein of the house. Oh. I have, I have tonight wooed Margaret, the Lady Hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. Ah. I should first say how the prince uh, Claudio, <coughs> my master, uh, planted and placed by my master, Don John, saw the whole amicable affair. <laughs> I thought they Margaret was hero. Oh, away went Claudio enraged. <laughs> we charge you in the prince's name. Stand. Call off the right master constable. We have recovered here the most dangerous piece of lecture that was ever known in the Commonwealth. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know him. Oh. Masters, masters. Never speak. We charge you to go with us. Oh. Men, oh. get up. Oh. Come on. Oh. 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 is not so good, and I'll warrant your cousin will say so. My cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. Oh, uh, God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. You'll be heavier soon by the weight of a husband. Fire upon thee! Art thou not ashamed? Of what lady? For speaking honourably? Is marriage not honourable? Is your lord not honourable without marriage? I'll offend nobody. There's no shame in a heavier for a husband. And it be the right husband and the right wife. What's Lady Beatrice else? Here she comes. 
<laughs> good morrow, good cats. Good morrows, sweet hero. Why, how now you speak in the sick tune? I'm out of all other tune, methinks. Tis almost five o'clock. Tis time you were ready. Oh, by my troth, <laughs> I'm exceedingly <laughs> ill. Hey-ho. For a hawk, a horse, or a husband. For the letter that begins them all, huh? <laughs> These gloves the Count sent me, they're an excellent perfume. Oh, I'm stuffed, cousin, I cannot smell. Oh, by my troth, I'm sick. <laughs> then get you some of this distilled carduous benedictus and lay it to your heart. <laughs> it's the only thing for a qualm. There thou prickest her with a thistle. Benedictus? Why, Benedictus? Is there some moral in this Benedictus? Moral? No, I had no moral meaning. I meant plain holy thistle. You may think, perchance, that I think you are in love. Nay, by our lady, I am not so foolish as to think that you are in love, or that you will be in love, or that you could be in love. Yet <laughs> Benedict was such another. And now is he become a man? He swore he would never marry, and yet now, in despite of his heart, and how you may be <coughs> converted, I know not. Yet, methinks you look with your eye, as other women do. <laughs> what? <laughs> Madam, withdraw. The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. <laughs> It is a busy time with me. Marry, sir, this is it. Yes, indeed, sir, this is it, sir, yes, sir. Uh, uh, what is it, my good friends? Good man uh, Burgess, sir, speaks a little of the matter. An old man, sir, and his wits are not so blunt as, God help, I would desire they were. Uh, but in faith, he is honest. Yes, I thank God. I'm as honest as any man in the town. Uh, uh, that's an old man, and no honester than I am. Comparisons are odorous, yes. neighbour Burgess. Uh, 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 marry, sir. Our watch tonight, saving your excellency's present, had trained two of the most sorcerous villains that ever existed. And we brought them to me and stabbed by you, sir. And if they, they, uh, oh, good old man, sir. He oh, will dear. be talking. As they say, when the age is in, the wit is out. <laughs> <laughs> well said in faith, neighbour Burgess. <coughs> yes, an honest soul in faith, sir, by my troth he is. But all men are not alike, alas, good neighbour. Indeed, he comes too short of you, neighbour. The gifts that God gives. Neighbours, you are tedious. It pleases your worship to say so. But we are the poor Duke's officers. But truly, for mine own part, if I were as tedious as a king, I could find it in my own heart to bestow it all on your worship. All thy tediousness on me. I would fain know what you have to say. Our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons. And we would have them this morning examined before your worship. Well, take their examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste as it may appear unto you. Uh, oh, have some wine, there you go. Uh, fare you well. May, my lord, they stay for you uh, to give your daughter oh, to her husband. Oh, I attend upon them, I'm ready. We are now to examination these men. Meet me at the jail.
come hither, my lord, to marry this lady. No. <laughs> to be married to her. Friar, you come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this count. I do. If either of you know any inward impediment, why you should not be conjoined, charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any count? I dare make his answer. None. Standy by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back, whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. Leonardo. Take her back again. <laughs> give not this rotten orange to your friend. She is but the sign and semblance of her honour. Behold, like a maid, she blushes here. Would you not swear, all you that see her, that you were a maid? by these exterior shows, but she is done. As she knows the heat of a luxurious bed, her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. <laughs> Dear my lord, if, if you, in your own proof, have vanquished the resistance of her youth, and made defeat of her virginity... Oh, Leonardo! I never tempted her with word too large, but does a brother to his sister show bashful sincerity and comely love? And seemed I ever otherwise to you, my lord? You seemed to me as Diane in her orb, as chaste as the bud ere it be blown. But you are more intemperate in your blood than Venus or those pampered animals, the raging savage sensuality. It is, my lord, well that you don't speak so wide. The sweet prince, why speak not you? What shall I speak? I stand dishonoured that have gone about to link my dear friend to a common stale. <sighs> Are these words spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, they are spoken, and these things are true. Let me move but one question to your daughter. What man was he talked with you yesternight at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at the hour, my lord. Why, then, you are no maiden. Leonardo, I am sorry, but you must hear. Upon mine honour, myself, my brother, and this grieved count would see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window, who hath indeed most like a liberal villain, confess the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. They are not to be named, my lord, not to be spoke of. Pretty lady, I am sorry for thy much misgovernment. Oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been. Half thou uh, with graces have been placed about thy thoughts, the counsels of thy heart. Fare thee well, most foul, most, most fair farewell. My heart, thou cousin, that will sink you down. Come, let us go. These things come thus to light. Smother her spirits up. Hath no man stagger here up one for me? <laughs> lady, how doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle. Wherefore? Why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not ope thine eyes. Grieve and I, I had but one. Why had I won? Why ever wast thou lovely in mine eyes? She is fallen into a pit of ink that the white See, hath drops too few to wash her clean again. Sir, sir, be patient. I, for one, am so attired in wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not. Although, until last night, I have this twelfth month been her bedfellow. Confirmed. Confirmed. Would the two princes lie? And Claudio lie? Hence from her, let her die. No, no, no. Hear me a little. By noting of the lady, I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames in angel whiteness beat away those blushes. And in her eye, 
There hath appeared a fire to burn the error that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool. Trust not my reading nor my observations. Trust not my age, reverence, calling your divinity. If this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Friar, that cannot be. Thou seest that all the grace she hath left is that she will not add to her damnation a sin of perjury. Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that to accuse me, my lord. I know none. Oh, my father, prove you that with any man converse with me at hours on me, or that I yesternight maintain the exchange of words with any creature, and then refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprision in the princes. Two of them have the very bent of honour, and if their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lies in John the Bastard. If they wrong her honour, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Time hath not yet so dried this blood of mine, but they shall find a wit in such a kind, both strength of limb and policy of mind, ability in means and choice of friends, to quit me of them thoroughly. No, 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 no. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince's left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in and publish it that she is dead indeed. Uh, what shall become of this? What will this do? She dying as it must so be maintained upon the instant she was accused shall be lamented, pitied and excused of every hearer. For what we have, we prove not to the worth whilst we enjoy it, but being lacked and lost. Why then we rack the value, then we find the virtue, the possession would not show us whilst it was ours. So will it fare with Claudio. When he shall hear, she died. Upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and every lovely organ of her life shall come apparelled in more precious habit than when she lived indeed. Then shall he mourn and wish he had not so accused her. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. Even though you know my inwardness and love be very much unto the Prince and Claudio, by mine honour I will deal in this secretly and justly. Be that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Tis well consented. Presently, away. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day, perhaps, is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, yeah, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Oh, how much might the man deserve of me that would write her? Is there any way to <laughs> show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It's a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange as a thing I know not. It were possible for me to say that I love nothing so well as you. But believe me not, and yet I lie not, I confess nothing. I'm sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear it and eat it. I will swear that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Why then, God forgive me. What offence, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in my happy hour, and I was about to protest that I loved well, you. Well, then do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart, there is none left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. <laughs> Kill Claudio. 
<laughs> Not for the whole world! You kill me to deny it! Fare you well! Back, tarry, sweet Beatrice! I am gone, though I am here. There is no love left in you now. I pray you, let me go! Beatrice! In faith I will go! We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of a villain that have slandered, scorned and dishonoured my kinswoman? Oh, if I were a man, what? Bear her in hand until they come to take hands. And then, with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh! God, if I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Ah, now hear me, Beatrice. Sweet hero, talk with a man out at a window. A proper saying. Nay, but Beatrice. Sweet hero, she is wrong. She is slandered. She is undone. Beatrice. Princes and counts. Oh, that were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend would be a friend for my sake. He is now as valiant as Hercules, that only tells a lie and swears it is true. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I'll die a woman grieving. Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it. Use it for my love some other way than by swearing by you think you in your soul that the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand. And so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so, farewell. assembly appeared. Which be the malefactors? Marry, that am I and my partner. But which are the offenders that are to be examined? What is your name, friend? Baraccio. Pray write down Baraccio. Oh, come on, come on, write down Baraccio. Oh, Festina Lente, partner. Festina Lente. Yours, Sarah. I am a noble woman, sir. My name is Conrad. Pray write down, mistress, gentlewoman, Conrad. <laughs> it is proved already that you are little better than false knaves and will go near to be thought so shortly. How answer you for yourselves? Larry, sir, we say we are none. Ah, a marvellous, witty woman. You, Sarah. A word in your ear. Sir, I say to you, it is thought that you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you, we are none. Master Constable, I go not the way to examine you. Must call forward the watch that are their accusers. Let the watch come forth. Master, I charge you in the prince's name. Accuse these two. This man, sir, said that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Write down Prince John a villain. <laughs> Why, this is flat perjury to call a prince's brother villain. You master cut. Pray thee, fellow peace, I do not like thy look, I promise thee. What heard you him say else? Marry, that he'd received a thousand pounds of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Flat burglary as ever was committed. By mercy. What else, Indeed. fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean, upon his words, to disgrace Hero before the whole assembly and not marry her. Oh, villain, thou will be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. 
What else? This is all. And this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John is this morning secretly stolen away. Hero was in this manner accused, in this very manner accused, and upon the grief of this suddenly died. Oh. Master Constable, <laughs> let these people be bound and brought to Leonardo's. I will go before and take their examination. Come, let them be opinion. Let them be in the hand. Oh, Coxcumble. God's my life. Where's the sexton? Let him write down the prince's officer, Coxcomb. Come, find them. They're naughty, Violet. Away! You are an ass! You are an ass! Dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not suspect my years? Oh, that he were here to write me down an ass! <laughs> but, masters, remember that I am an ass. <laughs> Though it be not written down, forget not that I am an ass. <laughs> no, thou villain, thou art full of piety. I shall be proved upon thee by good witness. I am a wise fellow, and which is more an officer, and which is more a householder, and which is more as pretty a piece of flesh as Hedy and Messina, <laughs> and one that knows the law. Bring them away. Oh, that I've been written down an ass. <laughs> Not, but for goodness sake. But if you go on like this, you will kill yourself. Bring me a father that so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine. Bid him speak of patience. But there is no such man. For, brother, men can counsel and speak comfort to that grief which they themselves not feel, but tasting it, their counsel turns to passion. You I pray, pray you peace. I will be flesh and blood, for there was never yet philosopher could endure the toothache patiently. But bend not all the harm upon yourself. Let those who offend you suffer too. There thou speaks reason. There I will do so. My soul does tell me hero is belied, and that shall Claudio know, and so shall the prince, and all of them that thus dishonour her. Here come the prince and Claudio hastily. Good day. Good day to both of you. Hear you, my lord. We have some haste, Leonardo. Oh, some haste, my lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you in so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could write himself with quarrelling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs him? Marry, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou! Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword. I fear thee not. Marry, beshrew my hand, if it should give your age such cause of fear. In faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Do not fear and jest at me. I speak not like a dotard nor a fool. I say thou hast belied mine innocent child. Thy slanders have gone through and through her body, and she lays buried with her ancestors, framed by thy villainy. My villainy. Thine, Claudio, thine, I You say. speak not right, old man. I'll prove it on his body, my lord. No if way, he'll... I will not have to do with you. Canst thou so doff me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou killst me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. You shall kill two of us. A gentleman indeed, but that's no matter. Let him kill one first. I'll whip you from your foiling pence. Yea, as I am a gentleman, I shall. A brother, content yourself. God knows I loved my niece and she is dead. Slandered to death by villains, scambling, fashion monging, outfacing boys that lie and cog and flout, deceive and slander. But, brother, I no matter, do not you meddle. Let me deal. Gentlemen, both. We will not wake your patience. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death. But on my honour, she was. Charged with nothing that was not true and very full of proof. Yeah. Lord, my lord. Oh, I will not hear you! No! Come, brother. Away! I will be heard. And shall. Or well, some of us will smart for it. <laughs> See? Here comes the man we went to seek. Now, Signor, <coughs> what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, Signor. You are almost come to part almost affray. We had like to have had our two noses snapped off by two old men without teeth. Leonardo and his brother. What thinkest thou? In a false quarrel, there is no true valour. I came to seek you both. 
As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Hmm. Art thou sick or angry? Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I jest not. I'll make it good how you dare, when you dare, and with what you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet young lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. My lord, with your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother, the bastard, is fled from Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. <laughs> well, my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Till then, peace be with him. He is in earnest. In most profound earnest. And I'll warrant you, for the love of Beatrice, and hath challenged thee. Most, most sincerely. Now, now, two of my brother's people bound. Baraccio, one. Hearken after their offence, my lord. Officers, what offence have these two done? Marry, sir, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruth. Secondarily, they are slanders. Sixth and lastly, they have belied a lady. Uh, thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, they are lying knaves. <laughs> First, I ask thee what they have done. Thirdly, I ask thee what's their offence. <laughs> Sixth, and lastly, why they are committed. And to conclude, what you lay to their charge. Rightly reasoned, and in his own division. <laughs> Whom have you offended, masters, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. <laughs> <laughs> what's your offence? Oh, sweet prince, let me go no farther in my answer. Do you hear me? I let this count kill me, for I have deceived even your very eyes. And what your wisdoms could not detect, these shallow fools who in the night overheard me confessing to this woman that your brother, Don John, had incensed me to slander the lady hero. How you saw me caught Margaret in hero's garments. How you disgraced her when you should marry her. My villainy they have upon record, which I would rather seal with my death than, than repeat to my shame. The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusations. But did my brother set thee up to this? Yea, and paid me verily for the soul. He is composed and framed of treachery. And fled he is upon this villainy. Come, bring away the plaintiffs. By this time our sexton hath reformed, Signor Leonardo, the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify when time and place shall serve that I am an ass. Signor Leonardo, the sexton? Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes. Sir. If you would know your wronger, look on me. Art thou this slave that with thy tongue hast killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain, thou beliest thyself. Here, an honourable pair, and a third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princes, for my daughter's <coughs> death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. It was bravely done, if you could think you of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Ch choose to revenge yourself. Impose to me what penance your invention can lay upon my sin, yet, yet sinned I not but in mistaken. By my soul nor I. And yet, to satisfy this good old man, I would bend under any heavy weight he'll enjoin me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. That were impossible. But I pray you both, possess the people in the scene here, how innocent she died. And if your love can labour aught in sad invention, hang an epitaph upon her tomb and sing it to her bones. Sing it tonight. Tomorrow morning, come you to my house. And since you could not be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew. For my brother hath a daughter, almost the copy of my child that's dead. And she alone is heir to both of us. 
Give her the right you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Noble sir, your overkindness doth wring tears from me. I do embrace your offer and dispose for henceforth of the poor Claudio. Tomorrow then I will expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. This naughty man shall face to face be brought with Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong, hired to it by your brother. No! No! By my soul! She was not on you know what she did when she spoke to me, but always has been just and virtuous in everything that I did know by her. Moreover, sir, which indeed is not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me ass. <laughs> I beseech you, let it be remembered in our punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pains. Your worship speaks like a most thankful and reverent youth. And I praise God for you. <laughs> oh, there's for thy pains. God save the foundation. <laughs> Go! I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. I leave an arrant knave with your worship, which I beseech your worship to correct yourself. For the example of others, God keep your worship, I wish your worship well, God restore you to health. I humbly give you leave to depart, and if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. <laughs> Come, neighbour. Until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. Which will not fail. Tonight I'll, I'll mourn with Hero. Bring you these villains on. We'll talk with Margaret. Our acquaintance go with this one, fellow. Mistress Margaret, deserve well at my hands by helping me to the speech of Beatrice. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and will thee then write me a sonnet in praise of my beauty? Thy wit is as quick as the greyhound's mouth. It catches. <laughs> and yours is as blunt as the fencer's foil, which hits but hurts not. Well, I will send Beatrice to you. <coughs> I think. Have legs. Therefore, we'll come. <laughs> the God of love <laughs> who sits above <laughs> And knows me, and knows me, how pitiful I deserve. I mean in singing, but in loving, Leander, the good swimmer, Troilus, the first employer of pandas, and a whole book full of these quondam carpet mongers, whose names yet run smoothly through the even roads of blank verse. Never were they so truly turned over and over as my poor self in love. Oh, marry, I cannot show it in rhyme. I have tried. I can find no other rhyme for lady but baby. <laughs> An innocent rhyme for scorn. Horn. A hard rhyme. And for school. Fool, a babbling rhyme, very ominous endings. No, I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor can I woo in festival terms. Sweet Lady Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I called thee? Yes, Signor, and depart when you bid me. But stay till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now, but yet. Ere 
I go. Let me go with that I came. Which is, with knowing what has passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore, I will depart unkissed. Thou hast frighted the word out of his right sense, so forcible is thy wit. But I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I must shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. And now, pray, tell me, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? For them all together, which maintain so politic a state of evil that they would not admit any good part to intermingle with them. For which of my good parts did you suffer love for me? Suffer love? A good epithet, for I do suffer love as I love thee against my will. Oh, in spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart. If you spite it for my sake, I'll spite it for yours, for I will never love which my friend hates. You and I are too wise to woo peaceably. It appears not. Now, tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill too. Then, serve God, love me and mend, for I will love you as here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proved my lady Hero hath been falsely accused. <sighs> the Prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John, the author of all, who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Signor, will you go and hear the news of me? I will love, live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thine eyes, and moreover, I will go with you to your uncle's. This the monument of Leonardo. That it is, my lord. <clears throat> Done to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies. Death in guerdon of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. And so th the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Hang thou there upon her tomb, praising her when I, I am done. <sighs> now, music, sound, and sing our solemn hymn. Unto thy bones, good night. Yearly will I do this right. Good morrow, ladies. Put your candles out. Thanks you all and leave us. Fare you well. Good morrow, masters. Each his several way. Come, let us hence and put on other weeds, and then to Leonato's we shall go. 
She was innocent. So are the Prince and Claudio, who accuse her upon the error you heard debated. But Margaret was in some fault for this. Although against her will, as it appears. Well, I'm just glad that all things sort so well. As am I, being out of my faith and forced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. Now, daughter, and you gentlemen and all, withdraw yourselves into a chamber by yourselves. And when I send for you, come hither, mask. The Prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. Brother, you know your office. You must be father to your brother's daughter and give her to young Claudio. Which I shall do with confirmed countenance. Friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, Senor? To bind me or undo me. One of them. <laughs> good Senor. <coughs> Truth it is, good Senor, your niece <coughs> regards me with an eye of favour. That I, my daughter, lent her. Tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. Uh, the sight whereof I think you had from me, the Prince and Claudio. But what's your will? Your answer, sir, is enigmatical. <laughs> As for my will, my will is your good will to be joined with ours. This day to be conjoined in the happy state of Happy matrimony. <laughs> <laughs> In which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Ah, here come the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. And good morrow, prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? Sirs, I am. Come on forth, brother. Here's the friar, ready. Which is the lady I must seize upon? Same as she, and I do give her to you. <laughs> okay, then she is mine. Sweet, let me see your face. That you shall not, till you have taken her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand. Before this holy friar, I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. <laughs> and when you loved, you were my other husband. One hero die defiled, but I do live, and as surely as I do live, I am a mate. A former hero, the hero that is dead. Uh, she died, my lord, whilst her slander lived. All this amazement can I qualify. When, after that, the holy rites are ended, I'll tell you largely of fair heroes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meantime. Let wonder seem familiar, and to the chapel let us presently. Soft and fair, Briar. <laughs> Which is Beatrice? <laughs> I answer that name. What is your will? Do, <laughs> Do you not love me? No more than reason. Why, then your uncle and the prince and Claudia are much deceived, for they swear you did. Do not you love me? Why, no. Oh. No more than reason. Why, well, my cousin Margaret and Ursula were much deceived, for they swore you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. It is no such matter. Then you do not love me. No, but in truly friendly recompense. Come, um, cousin, I'm sure you love that gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon that he loves her. 
For here is a paper written in his hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to Beatrice. And here is another in my cousin's own hand, stolen from her pocket, uh, declaring her affection unto Benedict. Oh. A miracle. Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee. But by this light I take thee for pity. <laughs> I would not deny you, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in consumption. Peace! I will stop your mouth. Oh. <laughs> How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? <laughs> I'll tell thee what, Prince. A college of wit crackers cannot flout me out of my humour. Dost thou think I care for a satire or an epigram? No, since I do purpose to marry, I will think nothing of what the world can say against it. And therefore never flout at me for what I have said against it. For man is a giddy thing, and this is my conclusion. As for thee, Claudio, I did think to have beaten thee. But in that thou art be like my kinsman, live unbruised and love my cousin. <laughs> oh, come, come, we are all friends. Let's have a dance ere we are married. Yes. That we may light in our own hearts and our wives' heels. Uh, we'll have dancing afterwards. First of my word, therefore play music. <laughs> Prince, thou art sad. Get thee a wife, get thee a wife. <laughs> My lord, your brother John is taken in flight and brought with armed men to Messina. Think not on him till tomorrow. I'll devise the brave punishments for him. Get him out of my sight! <laughs> Strike up the band! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you.